Hello from a very unusual perspective. Today I found some old footage of me working on this Mantis microscope. In particular, I had a power supply failure late at night and I quickly got it working again. And then I replaced the lamps with light emitting diodes. Why I did this, how I did this and how the actual troubleshooting process went on, I'm now going to show you. And yes, I was working for 48 hours and I apologize for looking slightly scruffy. Hello friends, it's the perfect storm. I was sitting here, it's 3 a.m. and uh, my Mantis microscope just croaked while I was working on an already heavily delayed prototype for Raper. Either way, I decided because it's not so often that somebody diddles around with such a Mantis, I'm going to let you look over my hands a little bit and show you what I'm up to. So. I already removed these two deflector fuckers here from the side which hold the lamps and I took out one of the two lamps. These are by the German company Osram and I'll try to zoom in a little bit that you can read the type. And yes, there is no shield in front. So now I took one of them out and now I grab the Vater. It's a habit of mine, whenever I grab a FATA, first I test it and then I go in and I FAT these two points. Ouch! But the reason for that is that these old lamps have a very high impedance, a very low impedance, sorry. And so you need to take both of them out and then the short will disappear on the inside as I'm showing you now. And the short is gone. So what do we have here? The next problem is this connector. It's more or less a more beefy version of the mono connector. But well, I cut it out here at the back and just in the middle. So in case I want to solder it together again and tint the two ends so that we can use it to fart out the connections. So I plug it in. I use an alligator clip for one end of the farter, connect it to the yellow pin. And now I can go in and I see the one thing farts, the other thing doesn't. Now we go around the other way and I see the one thing farts, the other doesn't. And I found online that this thing in theory works with alternating current. But for now, I believe direct current should also do the trick. And we are going to see if we can get the LEDs up with a power supply in a quick and dirty fashion. So we are plugging one of them in again, plugging the other one in again. And then it's time for the power supply. Long term followers of my channel know that I'm usually using the HP. But for this kind of task, this unit is ideal because it's really, really beefy. You see, it can give us 10 amps. And these lamps, you know, when they start up, the resistance curve is quite funny. So let's be conservative. Let's go in with 9 volts. And uh, we'll go in with a cool 1 amp. It's not enough, or it is enough to cause damage, but uh, well, so we get 1.6 and that should do the trick for now. So here we go. Number one. I always turn on a torch in case I do something which might cause the power to fail in the building so that in the case I'm not completely in the dark smashing up all the shit. And now it's time to see what happens. And we get a shitload of power being drawn 
and a small bit of light at the bottom. So what are we doing now? We're gonna give it more power and we see, wow, we've got some light there. So let's give it a bit of extra voltage and some more current and we see, wow, there is some light at the bottom. I mean, what's important here is that this deflector glass here is missing. So you see the cone is very focused while normally it's spread out. But for now this isn't important. For now I've got the power supply. I can put these in again and I'm back in business. On the long run, of course, I'm going to replace these halogen bulbs because they get hot as shit. So let's try it once again. Amusingly, the cooling fan doesn't turn. So let's try one other act. Let's try changing the polarity. Now I hear a little bit. So let's try something else. Nope, the fan still doesn't spin up. So let's try the, the other way around again. Let's increase the voltage a little bit more. Limit the current. And we see the fans running and everything's up. Success for now. And well, you really shouldn't use alligator clips for this because these fuckers really heat up. So we have to, on the long run, add an extension cable to the power supply because these will burn up in a minute or two. Either way, we got a quick fix. Congratulations to myself and keep fixing your lab gear if it breaks because throwing away is easy. As you see, this is now my new facility in Budapest and the Mantis still is here. So the repair obviously worked. And if you have one of those with a broken power supply, don't throw it away. Now you know just what to do. Thank you very much.